Where are we, Mark? Back at Edmonds Waterfront Park. Still summer, still raining, and close to it. Yeah, we're, we're actually back at the very location we began this series of videos, uh, which is exactly nine months ago today. Many moons. Many moons ago, nine moons ago today. Uh, and uh, we have good old Namu with us again. Yeah, yeah. Looking a little old, but and still there. He's still here, a little more tattered than he was nine yeah. months ago today. And so, uh, what are we going to do? Argument instances and forms. We're, we're going to demonstrate the concept of an argument form with one example, that's all. So an argument form is a pattern of reasoning that many different arguments about many different subjects could follow or fit. An argument form is abstract, whereas an argument that is an instance of a form or an example of a form is, has content. It's about some subject matter. Argument forms aren't about any subject matter. They're abstract. They're just patterns without any content that various arguments about various subjects could fit. Mm -hmm. So let's d demonstrate the example. Here's an example of one way to write an argument form, although we're going to need a little more. If blank, then blank, but blank, so therefore, blank. But I, I need to say that this blank is going to be filled in with what fills in this blank. So let's use variables. Let's say if p, where p is a variable ranging over or standing for declarative sentences. Yeah. Porcupines are perniferous. OK, or uh, June is a splendid month. Something like that. Whatever. It's a statement. A uh, declarative statement. We're going to let Q be a variable standing for some declarative statement. Quasars are quirky. Quasars are quir quirky, or neutron stars are neurotic. There we go. It would be that. And then I want to use P here, okay. and I want to put Q here. And there we have a common argument pattern. We have an argument pattern or form or structure. And it just says that if if you have an argument that is structured like this, it says if, and then it has a declarative sentence. Then it says then, and it has a declarative sentence. And then it says, as the second premise, it repeats the very same sentence that's here between the if and the then. And the conclusion is the very same sentence that's after the then. Mm -hmm. That is the form. So let's have an example. Can you think of an example of this? If Let's see. If um, if it's raining, then we're going to be wet. All right. Will that work? If it rains, if it rains, then we'll get wet. Okay, I'm abbreviating a little bit. Okay. We get wet. And it is starting to drizzle a little mm -hmm. bit. And it is raining. We'll say. Okay. It is raining. It rains. Not writing very neatly here, but oh well. Okay. Thus. So. Or so thus. We get wet. We get wet. So what we have then is an abstract pattern of reasoning expressed with variables and slots where our sentences can go. Then we have an actual argument that follows this form. Now, the way to tell that this argument is an instance of this form or an example of this form is that you can generate this argument from this form by replacing the variables in the form with sentences, keeping everything else the same. Mm -hmm. So these are the, the if and the then and the but and the so. That's the structural elements of the form. And then the variables mark slots where sentences can be put. And when we put sentences in place of the variable parts, the result is called a substitution instance of the form, right? Because we've substituted sentences for the variables. So this then is a substitution instance of this form. And it's almost like a cookie cutter. We have a cookie mm -hmm. cutter giving you a, a star-shaped cookie. Uh -huh. That'd be the form of the cookie. Uh -huh. But you could be making red cookies, green cookies, yellow cookies, chocolate as long chip as cookies. as long as chocolate chip oatmeal, as long as it's using that same form, all those different cookies are instances of the star-shaped cookie cutter mm -hmm. form. So this is like a cookie cutter for an argument. Something like that. Very good. And this is like a chocolate chip cookie made by this form. And we could make an oatmeal cookie which would say something different. If 
Okay. It's sunny outside, then we'll get sunburn. Mm -hmm. It is sunny outside, therefore, so we'll get sunburn. And that'd be a different it. argument that follows the same form. Right. So this form has no content. It's not about anything. It's just an st abstract structure. But this argument has content. It's about uh, what's happening right now, the rain. Yeah. So we have an argument form and a an substitution instance of that form. Okay. So I think this illustrates the concept of an argument form and its substitution instances. And how many substitution instances, how many possible substitution instances are there for this form? That should be an infinite number. Yeah, we could keep writing them all day. Yeah, because you just mm -hmm. keep changing this. Here is the P, mm -hmm. just like it rains, it is raining, same mm -hmm. thing. And here is the Q, mm -hmm. there's the Q. We get wet, mm -hmm. we get wet. Good. So as long as it has this pattern, if this thing, then that thing, and that's true, we get to say that's true. And you can mm -hmm. fill whatever you want in here, whatever you want in here, and it'll be an instance of mm -hmm. your form. Yeah. Now this form has a name. It does. It's commonly called modus ponens, a name that it was given uh, in the Middle Ages, and it's a name that everyone uses today. It's, it's, it's commonly recognized form. And it happens to be a valid form as well, doesn't it? When we say this is a valid form, all we mean is, is that every substitution instance of this form will be a valid argument, guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Any argument that is a substitution instance of this form that can be formed by replacing the variables with sentences, leaving everything else the same, is guaranteed to be a valid argument. And so we call this a valid form. And since this is an instance, this is actually a valid argument. It's a wet argument, but it's a valid it's, argument. We're all, wet. We're all wet. So we hope that helps you with the idea of an argument form and its instances. Thank you very much.